All right, well, welcome back. And in this lecture, I'm going to briefly talk about the Dart language. OK, so as we saw from the previous lessons, Flutter use Dart. And to be honest, uh, after a while being using Flutter and Dart, I think this is a great language because especially if you are familiar with Java, C++ or Python, you do a lot of a class type of coding. And the Dart pretty much follow all the object oriented features. Um, the only difference is Dart makes a lot of things easier and makes a lot of things more concise. It kind of get rid of a lot of the complicated and the little details used by C++ or Java. It kind of make Dart more similar to kind of the modern languages. All right. So anyway, so I'm not going to talk about the whole thing about Dart. The language itself is still very complicated, but I just want to show you some of the most important um, features about Dart, especially when you compare Dart with Java or C++ or Python, what's the difference there so that you can, uh, it will help you to understand some of the code better. Okay. So uh, there's a very good tutorial. Okay. You can Google something called uh, Dart tutorial uh, for Java developers. Okay. So there's something provided by Google, this one here, and that is a intro Introduction to Dart for Java developers. So you can actually follow this one here. Okay. So I kind of read this one as pretty short, concise. Um, I would just point out the most important part for us to understand. Okay. So with that, I'm actually going to kind of a go to, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, just go to a, uh, application here to just do some kind of sample coding. I will just do a Dart here. Could a rebel. All right, so that's just an online ID that will uh, help us to kind of type something very quickly and then be able to run it. Let me change the font size a bit bigger. All right, so that is the Dart file, right? So you got a main message. If you run it, one, this one give you um, kind of a, a message just like we see here in Flutter. So Flutter, you Dart. All right, so first of all, class, okay? So class is kind of the same concept as Java. So we can do a class, something called, you know, student. All right, so we kind of do the same thing. All right, add in, in Java. And then you can specify the attributes. I can have like a string. I can do an ID. I can do something like age. I can do another string, like uh, maybe maybe uh, again, another one for your, you know, uh, GPA. Or maybe we do a float like a GPA. Let's float, uh, maybe double. Okay, double is a supported time, not a float. Right, so that's how you can specify a class um, for a student, right? So it's very simple and concise. Now, first of all, Dart do not have all this Java's uh, like a visibility control, like a public, private, um, the default, and also maybe protected. So Dart doesn't use that. So by default, these ones are all you know uh, public. So you can actually access all of this. And you might be wondering, so uh, this is not good practice because we do need a private. So what should we do for private, right? So the answer is very simple. If you ever need a private, just use a underscore. Okay, that's this a private. This is a private. All right. And then also for the class itself, you can also mark it as a private. So that's why if you go back to here, all right. So remember when we are creating new screen. Now the state class, this one here is a private. OK, because you use underscore and the same thing for the other screens you remember. And it's also private. All right. So the that's a kind of a kind of a very cool feature for Dart language. And they actually use this kind of a prefix to specify the visibility, you know, just so you know it. All right. So for now, I'm not going to play too much about the uh, private right now. So basically, because this is a very concise way to define a class and just put the other name there, that's it. And you can change and modify and read all of this by yourself. All right. And the same way you can construct define the constructor. Okay, so when you are doing the constructor, it's kind of the same thing here. All right, so you can actually receive the ID, age and the GPA. All right, I guess you can do the same thing here. Actually, let's make sure this one work. Okay, age and then also GPA. All right, so I think that is that's actually double, double check the documentation. Make sure we're on the right page here. So to define a constructor, oh, you actually have to specify the type. So I forgot that one. All right, so this one here is a type, type, 
and type. Okay, so this is the kind of standard way to define this, just like in Java, right? So let's actually try this. All right, so I can create a student object. I call it student one. I will do a new student. I'm gonna put, you know, Tom, and then 22 and GPA 4.0. All right, so let's run the code. All right, looks like it works, right? So that's how you can define it. But uh, for a constructor, I think they actually also try to make it a lot simpler. So for example, if I, you know, um, uh, don't do it this way, I'll just leave it there. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna comment it out. Uh, the commented feature does not work. Okay. Let me just do this one, leave it here as a comparison. Okay, I think you can do student and you can do this.id, this.age, and this.gpa. All right, so this is just a very concise way to do it. I think you'll run the code, uh, it, will, it, should, it should still work. Let's actually double check. Okay, I'm gonna print stu1.id, print stu1.h, print stu1.gpa. All right, so if I run the code, all right, so it gave you the right value. So this is a concise way to take care of the constructor so you don't have to write this kind of a structure again and again. Okay, so that's another one. And then also you can actually provide uh, some kind of a optional and default value for this. So for example, for the ID, you can say, well, if you don't provide it, it's something called not available. And then if the age, if you don't provide it, I'm gonna assume you're 18. And then GPA is 0, 0.0. All right, so if you run this one, now this code remains the same. Actually, no, it's actually wrong. So uh, let me double check. And this one, we actually have to put a parenthesis here. Actually, the optional features, it's actually specified here. So looks like, yeah, we need to actually add a brackets. I forgot that one here. So we need to add this brackets, brackets, all right, so let's actually see this in a clear way. If I run this app. All right, and let me double check. See something's wrong here. Oh, yeah, once we have this, we do need to provide the name as we go uh, to initial like that. So I'm gonna put the age here and then GPA. Okay, so let's try to run this again. All right, so this one works. Okay, so let me actually summarize and recap this one. I'm also kind of a beginner for Dart. Don't you re really use this very often, but you know, this is definitely one option that for constructor, you could, you know, let me actually put the other way also here. So this is the way that is a very concise way that you just put the names here and then it will work. Okay, so that's one way. So I'm gonna comment it all here. This is another cooler way that give you the optional parameter. So if you don't wanna specify certain things, then you can just leave it there. So you need to add these brackets and then put some default value. So for example here, now I'm still wanna implement everything. So I'm just gonna explicitly say the ID, age, and GPA, right? So if I don't wanna do the ID first, I wanna do the age, I can ignore it. So I run this code. All right, so the ID is not available, but then these ones are available. Or I don't want to provide agent GPA, I can delete the other two, I only provide one. I run this one, and then you see it actually gives all the default value. Now, the reason I want to point out this one is because, you know, come back to the dark code, think about sometime when we're passing this title here. All right, so when you are doing the title, right, you create this new class. And then it asks you to do the title, you put a name and colon. So why do you type a name? Well, because in the constructor, as you can see, they use this type of structure. There are the brackets, brackets, and there's a title, all right? And then this title, the name is the same as this one. So if they use this brackets, when you are creating this uh, constructor, you must provide this name right here. Okay, so that's the optional uh, feature for the constructor. So I just want to point out that so that you can see sometime when you create a new class, you do have to provide this uh, name attribute. I, I believe this is the same as Python and you can also give this specific name. I think that the, the advantage of that one, you don't have to worry about the order. So for example, when I create this 
I can also start with an age first, right? Age 30. All right. And now I run this code, it still works because it's simply just mapping all the name with the parameter so you don't have to follow the same sequence. This is very convenient when you have multiple parameters. All right. So that is the basic class definition part. And then another thing you should know is this new statement. So for example, this is how you create this uh, object. Exactly the same as in Java or C++. But um, in Dart, you can actually really ignore this new statement. So for example, you can do a student stu2. This one will be the student. That's it. And I can do h 23. All right. So I do not have to type this new statement. All right. So if I run this one here, all right, so it still works. I'm going to print student2.id. And then you got the age, you got the GPA. And I run this one here. All right, so this one also works, right? So I just want to show you that you can have new statement or not. So in Dart, we actually prefer not to use a new statement because you know everybody knows this is the class you're trying to create a new class. That's why coming back to Dart, um, this one here you don't type new, but I believe you do new. That's same same kind of an effect. All right, and that's why here you do run app my app. You don't do new, but if you do new, it's same effect. Okay, so. Uh, you need to get used to this one. So in Dart, you really don't need to do the new statement. I believe right here, same thing. If you do a new text, that works. Okay, same idea, but you know, why do we need to add all this new statement, right? So that's another kind of improvement done by Dart. All right, so I think some of these features are really important. Another thing you should understand is this, uh, well, main method, obviously the main method is much simpler than Java, right? So in Java, you got public static void main and then string right so you got this kind of structure but in dart that's it you just do void domain and that's it and then also in dart you can use lambda expression now this is nothing really new uh, java even java 8 also support that so let me come back here to show it right so this is the main method right so you could actually write this method in a different way so you can do void main okay you can do this kind of expression to run app my app all right so if you do this one let me comment on the, the other one all right so this one actually works all right so this is called lambda expression now lambda expression is a kind of a simple way for you to specify this kind of a simple return all right so basically you don't have to do the curly bracket like this to, to specify the block and instead you just put that statement directly into the same line all right. Now, be careful about this one. If you want to do this one, you must make sure that uh, there's only one line of code you specify. If you want to do this one, you want to and then print to say that the app has been started. OK, so this won't work because you can't fit the two lines together here. All right. So if you want to do this one kind of thing, you must go back to the other way and then you can put this one here that's okay because you could have this block and then put multiple things okay so keep in mind if you do the lambda that's fine but then this one has to be one line only now think about the navigation code here we used it also use the similar structure this one here navigator push and the inside here okay you got this one here and then it's going to run this okay this is the one line of code right so this is something like a new uh, page right that's how it works Another thing is when you're using a Lambda, you must match the type. So for example, right here, uh, this one is working because this one is a void, right? So it doesn't need a render return. So you can basically put any code you want. But then some of the code right here, I go back to the navigator. So this one here is expecting to kind of a, uh, see a kind of a page object. So you want to make sure the Lambda here, this one basically just like a return. I want to return something. So you basically want to return this one. So this one had to be matching whatever the function is um, is, is required from this part here. All right. So uh, just so you know, the type actually definitely matters. And then this is just a simple way to specify the function return with one line of code, um, but it doesn't change anything else. The syntax and everything still need to be the same. All right. So these are some of the very basic things about Dart. Another thing I can think about maybe the type, right? So the type, Dart use a more flexible type. You can just do the typical type like this. 
You can also do um, some kind of a, a declaration like this without you know saying anything, and you can really assign that to to any kind of a, a type. So there are a lot of typing things you can look into about Dart, uh, but in the beginning, just stay to with the the basic types, and that's um, pretty much enough for your app development. All right. So anyway, these are just a very quick go through about the Dart. Uh, syntax. I just want to highlight the difference between Dart and Java. Some of the things you might see very often in the in the code, are right, like this one here is another kind of example about the Lambda, because this function requires a type of uh, my home page state. So that's why there's a line code here. You must return that one. So that's why you do this one. And again, to make it more clear, this is basically like a new statement that probably helps you understand. Or I can always change this line into this, into a block, right? Same idea. Okay, so this one might help you understand this more, right? So create a state, this is a function, and then you go back here to return it. Oh, you actually have to return it. Okay? So that is how it works, right? So you return this new object. So this is the kind of a, exactly the same as your Java, right? But in order to make this one more concise, you could just get rid of this one, get rid of the return statement, use a lambda to do it. And I told you Dart, you don't need to do a new statement. That's how you can get this a really concise way of doing things, right? It's definitely very convenient, but on the other hand, it takes your time, some time to be familiar with this type of approach um, because we didn't really use this very often in Java or C++. So, um, but you know, it's nothing difficult. All right, so if you want to learn more about Dart, I highly recommend this little tutorial, uh, but I wouldn't recommend you read a book about this whole Dart language. That's not needed, okay? You, you won't need that many special features. Most of the things you can Google and find them out.